First off, I didn't think I was going to be here because I thought I had a meeting that turns out to be tomorrow. So, yep, she will babysit you tomorrow. You'll learn stuff or practice stuff. I don't usually ever waste a day. If I'm gone, I got stuff for you. It's the advantage of recording everything you've ever taught over the last three straight years. I can find this day somewhere. I, like I had it ready when I thought it was there. This is a beautiful to-do list. If you guys want to be smart, make to-do lists that are color-coded by class period. Yeah, it's not like that. Well, to-do lists only work if you do them. That's the hard part. All right. So here we go. Our main goal. Feels quiet. Our main goal today is to get good at writing names. How many feel like you're okay at it? Anyone? Here we got one, two, three, four, five. Three of them at least had chemistry last year. Did you have chemistry last year? Okay. All right, here we go. Then acidic nomenclature can, that can get kind of confusing. And then and naming binary compounds, they're the easiest by a mile, in my opinion. That's what carbon dioxide is, one carbon, two oxygens, and we're ready to roll. Okay, this is what success looks like. Let's go ahead and look, and we will just work through these together. Easy enough. So try number one real quick. Number one is about as easy as they, they get. Oh no, I did it again. Watch out. All right, who has number one? Raise your hands. You don't have to say it, just admit it. All right, if you don't have it yet, we need to work on your speed as well. Okay, so the first thing your brain should sort of do is think, and you only know it so far, but you think, is that an ionic compound? Is it an acid or is it a binary compound? Which means two non-metals, basically. So you look at it, it is ionic because there's a metal and a non-metal. It makes ions that then attract to each other. In an ionic compound, you name the metal. And then if this is just one single element or one type, I should say, not single, one type of element, then you write that after ending in IDE, calcium oxide. Doable? Thumbs up if you can do just a straight two out of ionic compound name. It's metal, non-metal, IDE. Okay, good. Okay, next, your brain should look at a formula and it should think, is this an ionic compound? Is it an acid or is it two non-metals? And this looks like it has metals and non-metals, right? So this is an ionic compound, but for five seconds, tell your partner the difference in number two than number one. Polyatomic ion. You knew it. I know you know it. Okay. So number two is slightly different because it has a polyatomic ion. Back with me. So I still name the metal. Barium. And then I name the second half. If it's not a, just an element, then I need to know its name and its sulfate. It is a poly, which means more than one, atomic, more than one atom, ion. It's more than one atom that has a charge. Polyatomic ion, more than one atom that has a charge. 
okay, barium sulfate, and I'm ready to roll. I'm going to put a blue star or blue line under this. Those are words you should have memorized. Oxide, you should have oxygen memorized. And eventually, I mean, you already know it. Carbon di, what? Oxide. So really, all this should sort of be memorized. Um, all right, here we go. <clears throat> Number three, the first thing you should do is think, is it an ionic compound? Meaning, is the first one a metal and the rest a non-metal? No, it's the first one that isn't, right? What was the next thing your mind should ask? Remember, I've said it a couple times today. It's okay. So first, you think, is it ionic? Second, you think, is it an acid? Anyone know if that's an acid? It is. Put this in your note. Notes. There's, a, there's exceptions to everything. What is something that starts with an H and is not an acid? Water, H2O, hydrogen peroxide. Those are about your only two things. And you would never look up there and look at H2O and think, hmm, how, what would its name be? Like, you know, it's called water, all right? It has a technical name, dihydrogen monoxide. But pretty much, unless you see water, H2O, you see an H, it's going to be a what? Tell your partner. An acid. An acids have their own rules. It would be really nice if they just said, this is hydrogen perchlorate acid. That'd be nice, but they don't do that. They don't do it. So we're going to have a big section of notes before we move to number four, five, six, whatever, on how to name an acid. They're not awful, but you combine them with everything else I've been throwing down, they're kind of awful. In order to name an acid, you have to know how to name an oxyionic, or sorry, an oxyanion. The eight, it, hypo, and hyper, right? Okay, let me make sure I'm on the right slides here. Okay, there might be some confusing stuff on this slide because it was made by the authors of the book and sometimes they're confusing. But here we go. Here are your rules. If the anion, you tell your partner where you find an anion in a formula. Okay, I want you to say it's the thing after, and I have a small blank. What is it? H. Everything after H is the anion that we're talking about. It's the second half. Now, it's not linear half. It's anything after H. So if, I'm going to rewrite it here, if the thing after H in the acid ends in I'd, change the ending to ic and add the prefix hydro. Yeah, Addy, you're not alone in that feeling right there. Like, what? It just takes practice, it takes time. It takes a little bit of commitment. Not that you don't have it, but like it, it, you got to have it. So here we go. Here are examples. H, C, L. You'll notice all of these are in H and then a single element, right? That's because single elements end in IDE. So here we go. You would be given this formula, H, C, L, and you would think, okay, I look at the anion and it is chloride. Chlor what? I'd, chloride. So you'd say, all right, if my ending is an I'd, I change it to ic 
and add the word hydro in the front. So HCl would be called hydrochloric acid. So this is what happens when you have what I call a binary acid, which is an H and a single thing. So it's just one and one. So we have hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic. We can have, um, it's not real common, but you could have H3N. Now this prefix doesn't change anything. It's still just two types of atoms. So what's the name of N? Nitride. So that becomes nitric. acid, but it also has a hydro. Now, this is, this is the first style I teach you, and it's the most common one you will get wrong. Now, I don't, I don't mean you won't get these wrong, but a lot of you are going to write hydro in front of every acid you ever named from now on, because you learned, hey, an acid has hydro in front of it. It only has hydro if it ends in "-ide", okay, you're gonna, you'll see it. Because who's heard of hydrochloric acid? Anyone? Okay, it's the number one acid we use in this class because it's cheap, it's kind of dangerous, but not super dangerous, so we can use it. Who's heard of sulfuric acid? Almost everyone. Why doesn't it say hydrosulfuric acid? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Because the rules tell me I don't put hydro on that one. It's not supposed to be there. Okay, so here we go. There's a few rules. If it ends with ide, it's a hydroic. Ide, hydroic acid. Okay. If the anion in the acid ends with ATE, so these are my standards, right? The ATE is like my base. If it ends with A-T-E, I change the ending to ic acid. Does it say anything else in bold in this sentence? No. So do I put hydro? I do not. So I have H2SO4. SO4 is an eight, A-T-E, sulfate. So that means the eight becomes ic and I just write it. It's sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is, is used a ton. Like we'll use it in here as well. It's more expensive and a little bit more caustic. So I don't use it as much as hydrochloric acid. Uh, hydrochloric acid does not eat away the polish on the floor. Sulfuric does, so I don't, I usually don't use sulfuric as much, but it's, it's there. Okay, so here's some other examples. Chloric, H-C-L-O-3. This is called chlorate, right? So this becomes chloric acid. Now, look at this one. HClO4. Let me come. I'll just get. Oh, hey, that was weird. Thought I hit that one. HClO4. I would look and I would know this is called perchlorate. If you have an acid that ends in eight, we know it becomes what? Ic acid but we have to include the prefix to distinguish between ClO3 and ClO4. So ClO4, that's one more than three. So we call it per chloric acid, okay? If, 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 everyone looking at me? If the oxy anion has a prefix, you must include that in the name of the acid. Okay, I'll say it one more time. You can write it down if you want, you don't have to. If the oxy anion has a prefix, 
you must include that in the name of the asset. So could we have, well, I'm not gonna say it because that'll confuse you. We're done. Okay. Uh, right there. Nope, oh, sorry, I went the wrong way. I... Oh, wherever, this is the next one I wanna be at. So we're good. Okay, rule number three. And this will cover it. There's just three of them. Rule number three. If the anion in the acid ends with I-T-E, we ch change the ending to O-U-S. Acid. Does it say anything about putting the word hydro in the front? No, so don't, like, please. It's because of love. I don't want you to. I don't want to mark it wrong. Okay, so we have two examples here with the chlor eight again. Chlor, I'll start lower. You take one off of chlor eight, it becomes ClO2. And we would call that ClO2 part, we call that chlor eight. Eight becomes os or us and then you would just put it at the end so chlorous acid but this one hclo that has two less so it's the name of clo just ow <laughs> my thumb cramp of just clo is hypochlorite right so I have to include hypo, and then I becomes us acid, hypochlorous acid. Yep, because they'd be way different. Hydrochlorous acid would not exist. That's not, by name, that's not a thing. So yes, please be careful with your P's and D's. Um, Okay, do you have the rules written down? So let's go back to our example. Now, if I were you, by the way, I would memorize three acids. I just know them straight out. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. Those are the three main money makers in AP chemistry. Hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. I would know their names and their formulas. Okay. Hold on, I'll write them down. How about that? So the three main ones are HCl, which is hydro chloric acid. That's the main, main, main one. Then the next most common one we'll use is H2SO4. And that's called sulfuric acid. And then in a ton of problems, um, they will give you uh, nitric acid, which is just HNO3. Now, these are not all of the acids. There's thousands of acids, but those are the three most common that we'll use on a problem. Because it will say like, nitric acid is added to whatever. Write and balance the equation. <laughs> they what? <laughs> like, oh, that acid, I have no idea. Um, most of the time, if we eat or ingest acid that's not a drug, it's citric acid um, or ascorbic acid, that's like vitamin C, or acetic acid, which is vinegar. The drug acid, I can look it up, but I don't know. Um, okay, now coming back here, see if you can answer number three now. Look at your rules. 
Look at your rules. Breathe deep. It's okay. You look stressed. You're good? It, it, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of little things. Okay, raise your hands if you have an answer. Well, that's not very many hands. It's okay. We can be friends. We can be friends if you're not waving, waving hands. Uh, we'll probably even be better friends because we'll see you during meet time, right? Okay, here we go. I would look at this problem and I would ask myself, is it an acid? It is because, tell your partner why you know it's an acid or how. Because it starts with an H and it's not water. Okay, the next step, if it's an acid, I got to think, what's the name of the second part? What is the name of ClO4? Perchlorate. So the next thing I would do, I would have to use my acids, like my knowledge, and I'd know that an eight becomes what? Ick per must be included. And this is the element I'm talking about. So I would call HClO4 per chloric acid. It might, it's probably one, sorry. There's no space there. You're right. Yeah, my bad. It's a kitten, Brr. chloric acid. Okay, there are no more acids on here, right there. So let's practice a few that's not right here. You okay with that? All right, so let's practice HNO2. Let's practice HSO2. And let's practice H3P, give her a shot. Ooh. It's probably not going to sound very good on the recording. Sorry, future person that may never watch this anyway. Okay, when you have them, will you compare to your lab partner? You okay? Sorry, I'm out of it. Wait, I'm going to mute this.
All right, here we go. How did that go? So we have HNO2. It's an acid, of course it is, because we're practicing acids, right? NO2 has what name? I'm sure you told your partner. It is called nitrite. That one is just nitrite because the base for nitrate is a three. And I know that's tricky, but you gotta, you just have to memorize nitrate is NO3 and you should, you will use that an overwhelming amount of time. Like it is the number one thing because it's always soluble and they wanna pair it with something that won't be soluble with something else. And they, so it's there. Nitrate is the three. So this is one less, which makes it an ite. So do I put hydro? No, I call it ni nitrous acid. Now it has nothing to do with nitrous that you put in your car. If you're like, oh, I know what that is. No, that's different. That's a gas. You could put it in your car if you don't ever want to drive it again. <laughs> you're welcome to. Yeah, you'd be dead. Okay, here we go. Shh. Who had it right? Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate that that didn't even hurt my shoulder to raise it right there. That's a good day. All right, HSO2. This time, what's the base for sulfate? A four. So we've gone down two, which means we are hypo. And then we have sulfurous. Uh, there we go. Sulfurous acid. You are not graded on your spelling in my class or the AP test. It needs to look the same. I'll put a Q and I or, but, oh, and it should be connected. I don't know why I keep doing that. It should be all one word. <laughs> oh, sorry. I never really grew up. So it's hard to be a teacher. Um, all right. Number three, that, that was for you then. Who said that they needed that? You're welcome. All right, H3P. What's the name of, of P? Phosphorus. <laughs> but in an atom, it's called phosphide. So it's IDE, which means, do I put a hydro? I'm gonna dedicate this to Haley. Hydro phosphoric acid. Hydrophosphoric acid. Who got three for three and feels okay about it? Okay, there's only one problem. You don't get the notes on your test. So practice, practice, practice. Okay, so finally we're on number four. That took a long time. Number four, Cu, C2H3O22. That's a lot of stuff. Oh, sorry, not a second two. There usually is. My bad. Okay. Is it ionic? Yes. So I'm not moving lower. It is ionic. It has a metal at the start. Does it have a polyatomic ion in it? Yes. And it's called acetate. What's the name of the metal? Copper. And then what? acetate but we have a problem we have a problem what's the charge of copper is it on anything you wrote down no it's a transition metal yeah we'll, we'll get there in a second you are 100 percent right copper lives in no man's land right here right it's a transition metal which has variable charges, except for three of them that I had you write down yesterday. So we don't know its charge. So when you name, you gotta be careful. If you have a transition metal, 
that doesn't have a fixed charge, you must list its charge in the name. Okay, now say it, pain. Perfect. Acetate has a negative one charge. So copper must be equal but opposite to that, which would be a plus one. Did anyone remember what I accidentally said when I first read this? I put two, two at the end, right? And that's because copper is usually a plus two, which would mean acetate be in parentheses and you have C2H3O2, two. So that's where that chemistry and slip came from. I hear chairs moving, are we out? No, no, we're not even close, sophomores. Um, okay. Will you try number five on your own? I want to see if me enforcing something just caused you to do something wrong. Try that on your own. That beautiful human being right there. You probably are the best friend I've had, except for your mother. But you're way better than Andy Blue ever was. Thank you again. Oh, that's fine. Oh, uh, ooh, ooh. Okay, how many of you have an answer? Okay, well, yeah, it's on. Did anyone, is anyone willing to admit, and you don't have to, did anyone put magnesium to hydroxide? Only one? You're the only honest one. There's probably five or six of you. I was, that's exactly what I was worried about. And thank you for being vulnerable there. That is the wrong answer. Don't feel dumb. Someone else said what? Okay, look. This is tricky. Everything in chemistry is tricky. <laughs> oh, give me that face. Here we go. <laughs> Copper lives where? Transition metal. They are variable charges. That means they can be different values. You with me? But... Where does magnesium live? Secondary. Family two, which is always a two. So like, it's not like it's dumb. It's correct, but it's not the proper way to write it. Cause we always know magnesium's a two. So why say it? I know it's dumb, but that's how it is. If, right. So if we know the charge, we don't insult the reader by telling them what it is. Like, oh, I know they know it's a two. Well, I'm not gonna tell them. But if we don't, we have to. It's very, very common. I'm pretty sure Ryan, you're not, uh, definitely not alone. Okay, so this is just magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide. And then some kids, maybe you're thinking it in your head, but they're like, well, what about that two or something like that? Well, we know it's a two because we know magnesium's plus two, hydroxide's a one. So we got to have two ones to offset one, two. Like 
When I say we know, I know that you're, some of you are barely hanging on to that cliff of understanding. The holds will get bigger and eventually you'll get to the top. You got to be patient with yourself. Patience, patience. This is hard. It's hard. And it's, it's one of those, it's like math where Rollins does it and it makes perfect sense on the board. And then you look at your paper and think, what in the age is this? <laughs> and it's the exact same, but it's easier when I do it. It'll get easier as you do it. Okay. Number six, I'm going to draw one of these just because I enjoy drawing red flags. Anyone remember the red flag in the notes yesterday? What was it? It was NH4. So the reason it's a red flag is because it consists of non-metals, but it forms a positive ion. So it is considered an ionic compound. All right. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this class. I want you, I'm just gonna take a time out and say, I've taught AP classes for five or six years and a couple of them have sucked. I'm just gonna be blunt. I love that you're engaged, that you care, that you're expressive, that you're willing to ask a question. You're willing to go out on a line and admit you're wrong. So I appreciate you guys. Should I yell at my own kid? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. What? Okay. So you guys keep it up. If you're struggling, know that I love and respect that you're trying. I really want to stress that. Okay. NH4. It does form ionic compounds. So we name the first piece. And once again, it's a red flag because it's the first time the first piece is two things. What's the name of NH4? It's my favorite. It is ammonia. Look at that. Did you know ammonium and aluminum are spelled almost the same way? They're the same, just one letter. Okay, ammonium, and what do we call OH? Hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide. The, shh, the NH4s, at first, they're tricky. They're like, oh, another rule. But no, always write the ammonium and then just name the second thing. They'll become your money makers. You'll like them because they, they never really change. There's no charges, there's no nothing. It's an A with some scribbles and then the second half. I'll give you 100% credit and so would the graders. But, but don't put like, and have some like smudge right here. They're like, oh, they said aluminum. Okay. Be careful. All right. Number seven. Is seven ionic? Yes. How? How do you know that besides your genius? Okay, because it's sodium, which is a metal and a polyatomic ion. Attack it while I eat sushi. I'm going to mute this. When you're done, put your pencil down so I know who's done. When you're done, put your pencil down. You're done, right? Nope. Yep. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Sulfurous. 
Okay, sorry. No, first student ever to put their head on my belly. Congratulations. I'm sorry. We'll we'll keep working. Okay. It's okay. The driver's head wants someone to grab my knee instead of the gear shifter. That was more awkward. Okay, here we go. Look at the screen, but just barely actually, just barely more. NA2CR207. So we named the metal sodium. And then CR207 from your memory, anyone? Dichromate. Sodium dichromate. No Roman numeral because sodium's always a one. ALP, it's a two atom ionic compound. We're going to call it aluminum phosphide. Okay, I need to skip down to number 12 because we haven't talked about this one yet. Number 12 is a different style. They're the easiest in my opinion. All right, it's a binary compound. It's not platinum. It is a P and three I's. A P and three I's. Okay, here we go. So P I three, stick with me. I wrote that poem. All right, when you get two non-metals together, now I don't mean a polyatomic ion, there's no charge with PI3, right? You name the first one as an atom. So phosphorus. And the second one you name with IDE, but, you include a prefix to tell me how many there are. So it's phosphorus and then three, the prefix is tri. And then I put the word iodide. Not really, it's triodide. But the way I wrote it there would be weird. It's fine, you get that right. You would ignore one. It's okay. It's okay. You'll get it right either way. But it'd be called phosphorus triodide. If you say triiodide, that's 100% fine too. Nope. <laughs> I won't give you confusion and neither will the AP test. It, they... AP is extremely meticulous to make sure everything's okay. It'll make sense. Phosphorus triiodide. This is naming binary compounds. So add this to your notes. I will find the slide. Naming binary compounds is way over here. Come on, Thomas, there we go. Nomenclature is just a really ugly word for saying name. So we're getting the names of binary compounds. So you don't have to write all the words right there, but so that you know, the less electronegative atom is usually listed first. Just put the first one that's written when they give it to you in a sentence. A prefix is used to denote the number of atoms of each element in the compound. Mono is not used on the first element listed, however. So like carbon dioxide versus carbon monoxide. Carbon dioxide means there's two, CO2. Carbon monoxide means there's one. But I would never say monocarbon monoxide. If the first one's just one, I leave it alone. But and you're like, quit talking. There's so many buts. But if there's more than one of the first things, then I do have to indicate how many there are with a prefix. 
So dichlorine heptoxide. Okay, these mono di tri tetra, and then these are just geometry. So like that, that one might not be that hard. Mono di tri tetra penta hexa octa nona. Oh, hepta. Sorry, skip hepta. Whatever. They're there. One thing we'll use, not use, but it'll be on some test questions is N2O5. That's pretty common. Will you see if you can name N2O5? I've never seen above seven in anything we've ever done. Yeah, there are some things. Crap, I just forgot their name. Complex ions, and they have crazy prefixes. But lucky for you, 2013 eliminated them. All right, and did you have to do what? Well, hydrates and like octadecanona, quata. <laughs> Let's see, I'll find one. How many of you have an answer? Raise your hands. Okay, keep going for a second. I'll read you one of these names. Hey, don't go too crazy yet. All right, hold on. Here you go. You'll enjoy these words. Oh, crap. I can't even find them in time. Hey, it was dinitrogen pentoxide. Who had that right? Okay. 